You know when you watch a horror movie hmm. <laughs> and you, you, you see on the screen somebody that should know better and you know you, you, you know something horrific is about to befall this person and you just, you can't understand why they're continuing to go down that dark hallway sure, or <laughs> just walk into that room without turning a light on right yeah, like what do you do the phone rings don't answer it no. the calls are coming from within the house right like you it, and so you, you you kind of put your hand over your face and you watch through your fingers you watch the inevitable incur right? some yell at the screen and uh, try to exactly get to don't yeah. do it what are you doing yeah that's what i that's what i was like Yesterday, when Scott Service called upon Robbie Ray to try and close out a game in Houston with Jordan Alvarez at the plate. Let's play lefty-lefty, even though Robbie Ray hasn't done this ever. Um, And you just took your struggling closer out. Mm -hmm. In game one, we're already establishing if my closer has issues closing, we're removing him for somebody who's not done this. And on top of it, I know this personally because Robbie Ray is on my fantasy team or my son's fantasy team, Cooper's fantasy team that I co-own with him, and he has been struggling. And not just struggling, but against Houston. Remember we had a caller yesterday from Seattle saying the Mariners are going to beat Houston? And I'm like, fine, I'm genuine. Castillo might get it done, but Robbie Ray concerns me because Houston has been savaging him. First pitch through my fingers. Jordan Alvarez takes the mightiest hack of them all on a fastball, and I'm thinking to myself as he fouled it off. Whew. Big cut, man. At it that point right. in time, Chris, you're sitting at home next to Sarah, who's on this program Friday, and you're telling her, what? What are you telling her? Robbie Ray comes into the game. Jordan comes up, and I goes, he's definitely hitting a home run here. A three-run shot. And she goes, to win it. she goes, nah, he's going to strike out. Uh, I go, okay. Has she, has she not seen <laughs> horror movies? She strikes me as a worldly pop culture savvy person. No, no, she is. Yeah. Honestly. You could just feel the game honestly, going this way, man. You could just feel it. Honestly. And it's a phrase you hear a lot in lingo and jargon from baseball announcers. And I, whenever I heard it over the last several months, I would teach my kids what they mean by middle, middle. You might hear that a lot, middle, middle. What that means is it's the middle of the strike zone, both longitudinally and latitudinally. Like if you could pinpoint right in the middle where a ball would go, it's middle, middle. Doesn't move very much. It's just straight. Just boom. Broadway. And that's what Robbie Ray delivered to Jordan Alvarez. And for maybe folks who aren't diehard baseball fans but do have kids, it's as if the Mariners decided in their most important spot, having already chased Justin Verlander by putting seven on him, it's as if they turned this playoff baseball game into a T-ball game and put out a T and said to Jordan Alvarez, I'm placing it on the tee, and you get one swing at it. Hit it as far as you can. Go. (laughs) And unfortunately for Mariners fans, it is like the last at-bat of the run through the order in a t-ball game where everybody gets to run around the bases. I mean, I saw it coming. And then I read Jason Stark, who I follow afterwards on Twitter, saying Scott Service said after the game, well, we talked about it going into the series. We had a plan. We just didn't execute it. Oh, I'm sorry. You talked about it. My bad. So you you had a plan, and your plan was, let's bring in Robbie Ray to pitch to Jordan Alvarez. That was the plan? That's, the, plan is, the plan is, let's abandon our closer in game one. Really? That's the plan? I was, I was and we'll talk about it with Nick Totoro in a second here. I was biting my fingers down in the cuticles last night when Aaron Boone took out Wandy Peralta, who did very well in the eighth inning and pitched to one batter in the ninth to give a soft playoff opening to the guy who was so good. He was the, without a doubt, all-star closer for the American League because he had such a great first half in Clay Holmes. Second half of the season, he has been wild and he has been unreliable to the point where they were even considering giving Aroldis Chapman a shot at the job again. Yikes. Until he imploded by getting a tattoo and he couldn't 
answer the bell because it got infected. And then when I guess he was told that he wasn't going to be on the postseason roster, he just bolted. So they bring in Clay Holmes, and he hits the first batter. And I thought to myself, what happens if Holmes can't perform here? Game one, your closer gets blown up in game one of a playoff series. That is a major problem. But at least Boone pushed the button. What about the plan to go with your closer and stick with him? And I know this is 2020 hindsight, but you're seeing your closer struggle. Let's take him out and bring in a guy who doesn't ever do this and who has been lit up by the Astros and who's so pig-headed that as Pedro Martinez saw and said after the game, check your ego at the door. Did you not see that first hack on your fastball? Like, you're not going to see that again. That's what Pedro said. You shouldn't see that again in the rest of the at-bat. Middle, middle, man. And I feel for you Mariners fans. Feel for you because you got to come out with that win. You got us. Have to. You put your you put your marker down on that game. We are young and we are coming for you. And Justin Verlander, your yesterday's news, yeah. our home run king. He's he's gonna go and damn near hit for a cycle or have an opportunity for that with a double and a triple. And Suarez is going yard and Crawford's going yard and we are shutting all you folks up. And we're taking game one, and we're going back to Seattle with a home field advantage. Good luck on that. Nope. This series is over, right? I can't say that. But how about we come up with a plan to stick with a plan, not try and execute a plan that nobody's ever heard of with somebody who clearly wasn't ready for it? What the hell was that? (laughs) 